Hey guys, my name is Winden and welcome to my first League of Legends video. Today, I will go over my personal top 10 most useful tips high elo ADCs use and abuse in their games that will definitely help you climb. Keep in mind guys that these tips meant to increase your game knowledge and can be applied in your games instantly. You should always think which pick will suit best for each individual game and it should be based on friendly and enemy team composition. Let's make it simple. If your bot lane picks are stronger than your opponents, you will have higher chances to win the lane and the game afterwards. The same concept is applied to every single role in League. So if you really want to climb your elo, next time you play rank, try to look at the enemy team composition and choose ADC that would be comfortable for you to play. Actually, this is a really hot topic to discuss and I'll definitely make another whole video on that, but for now, let's move on. So the next tip sounds like that. Master a few champions only. Most of low elo players don't realize that, but they expect high results in a short period of time, playing different roles and different champions at the same time. Don't get me wrong guys, there is nothing bad in playing all roles for fun, but it's really important to have a main role with a few main champions you can rely on in order to climb faster. Just pick 2-3 champions in your main role and become really good at them. This way, you will have more time to learn about other important game knowledge and mechanics and it will boost your elo faster than you can imagine. Ok, so now when you are actually in the game, let's move to tip number 3. Do not FK before first minion wave, protect yourself from invade. Guys, trust me, you do not want to give an advantage before very first minute. It is very likely that enemy team will try to invade on you, especially if they have good CC champs like Thrash or Blitzcrank. So if you don't invade yourself, just defend the entrances from the invade. Otherwise you can burn your precious summoner spells or even die for no reason, giving your enemy huge lead before the laning phase even started. So the tip number 4 is also before the laning phase. Know the enemy jungler's starting position. It is always good to know where the enemy junk start for a number of reasons. If the enemy jungler starts from your side of the map, you have to be aware of early gain, so you might vision the bush early to stay safe. On the other hand, if you are not leashing and you know your enemies are, you can use that opportunity to harass or even kill enemy bot lane. But if their pick is stronger at all in or they just ward it in advance, you can always push the wave before they appear. That will give you level 2 power spike even faster. So let's move on to the next tip and probably the most important one. Always remember, farm is a key. Farm is one of the main and most underrated game routing in League of Legends, especially for ADC role. You want to get your items ASAP to deal some damage in a team fights. It is your main drill. Always try to farm every CS and look for additional side waves and jungle camps later in the game. This is no joke guys, you must farm better in order to get your elo higher. Always remind it to yourself that every CS counts. Better farm over enemy ADC will give you gold for additional items, so you can deal even more damage in team fights. Tip number 6 is probably that most of ADC players always forget about. Stay out of harass and lane when your support is not with you. Be always patient about your support movement. He can decide to roam after base to help out the other lane. Just play safe and don't get caught until he come back. It can be devastating to lose a lot of HP or even die before your sub comes back to lane. So play smart and safe. Ok, what's next? Are you keep pushing? Then set up a proper vision so you don't get gained by enemy jungler. The better your vision is placed, the less chances you die due to overextension in the lane. The most basic gain timing for most of common jungle routes is around 3 minute mark. And do not forget to buy pink wards whenever you're base. Even in low elo it is not wrong start thinking about better vision control. So when you actually rise and meet better players, you are already able to defend yourself from better junglers or control objectives better due to proper warded timing and placement. Better vision on the map makes you die less every game because of awareness of enemy pathing. Ok, let's move on to tip number 8. Always look for those juicy tower plates. If you happen to be in a driver's seat, look for opportunity to pressure the enemy under the tower. There are a few reasons behind it. By sieging enemies under tower, you can get a significant CS lead over enemy ADC due to your harass and hardy CSing for them. 
On top of that, you get additional 160 gold per broken plate. It is one of the best way to snowball your lead even harder. And as a cherry on top, after a quick break in first tower, you can rotate to top or mid lane and try to get another tower plate if it's still under 14 minute mark. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on guys, for a sec, okay? I do not encourage you to insta-push your waves every single game 24-7. Be always mindful of what you're doing and try to learn understanding when you're strong and can push the lane into the enemy tower without any risk. About rotations. After breaking bot tower, swap with mid or top immediately. There are several reasons behind it. After breaking bot tower, you want to break mid and top towers too. You not only get a sweet amount of gold for the team, but also expanding your freedom around the map. Losing tower on each side of the map means also losing your territory around it. If you lost your bot lane tower, it is better for you to swap with other lane that has tower and farm waves without fighting and try getting your lead back by farming. The logic behind this is that most of top or mid laners possess better survivability or escaping tools and it is safer for them to farm side lane without tower or vision so they have lower chances of dying if things get spicy. Talking about side lanes. Do not ever farm side lane if it's unsafe. Guys, ask yourself every time before move to farm another wave. Is that really worth it? Is that safe for me to be there? Do I see all the enemies on the map to be sure I don't die? Farming side lanes on autopilot is 100% bad habit to have. It is always frustrating to die far in a side lane for nothing in return. So always keep in mind that additional death is probably not worth that one pack of the creeps. Okay, I think this is it guys. Oh wait, you know, I lied to you. I actually got some extra tips for you. Let's suppose it is a little reward if you are still watching this video. So quick bonus tips guys. Always keep in mind your own and opponent's flash before important teamfights. It is super important to use every single advantage you can get and raise your chance to win the teamfight. Talking about small advantages you can get every single game. Do not forget to utilize defensive items like stopwatch, GA or QSS. Start using these items right away in your games. The stopwatch is only 600 gold investment, but it is a game changer in terms of utility and one of the best items in the game. Another good items for certain scenarios are Tabby Boots and Guardian Angel vs Heavy Physical Damage Team, QSS and Mercury Boots vs Heavy CC, and Ma of Momorius vs Heavy AP Teams. Do not underestimate defensive items and focus on surviving as your first priority in teamfights over dealing damage. Talking about surviving, let's end this with the final bonus tip. Die less, ladies and gentlemen. Not actually trolling you guys, think about it after another loss in a ranked game. If you tend to die a lot, I personally recommend you to watch games after you played it. Just spare a few minutes after the game and look at your mistakes. Try to analyze and think how to fix them, so you don't make them in the future again. We did it guys. Here is my personal top 10 tips for getting better at ADC role and in game in general. Keep in mind that most of these tips can be applied instantly in your games, but still requires time to master. Moreover, every game is individually unique, so try your best to apply this knowledge into your games accordingly. If you found these tips useful, make sure you hit that like button and do not forget to subscribe to my channel, as I will be posting more League of Legends content, especially tips and guides for ADC role. At the moment I am making this video, I am planning to start streaming on Twitch soon, so if you are interested in a full gameplay experience, follow me on Twitter just to stay tuned and ready for more upcoming content. Thank you again for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.